Hi guys, as chapter 5 is taking me forever to do, I'm going to do the event story real quick because my sister requested it and I didn't know it had a story, so we're going to do that. The Keeper inadvertently stepped into a game set by him. A red moon, an ancient ma mission, a blizzard, and deceptive participants. A battle of mind and will commences now. Uninvited guest. Whenever exams approach, I wish for disaster. Floods, hurricanes, asteroid impacts, anything to kick reality away for a bit. Just a bit. I don't know, asteroid impacts sound like longer than a bit. It sounds like death for everyone, probably. Various animals reside here, and occasionally a few demons. And occasionally wolf people. Yeah! Ring ring! Banana phone! Mmm, so sleepy, don't bother me. Oh no, today's the intro to Corrosion Studies exam. What time is it? 6.37, still early. You felt around and pressed the alarm switch, falling back into a deep sleep. No, what if it's already night? You quickly roll out of the bed, precisely locating the pen, draft paper, and eraser, shoving them into your bag. Once everything is ready, you take a deep breath and open the dorm door. Huh? This isn't the school I know. Oh, we're in London, England. Jack the Ripper. I get it. This must be a dream. Good, I'll go back to sleep. I hate your dreams, bro. You quickly turn around, but the dormitory and the entire building is long gone. You had to turn again to look at the street ahead. Is anyone there? Hello? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Glug glug. Oh, no, not the glug glug. Thank goodness, something finally responded to me. You excitedly dash toward the sound, but only find a small red mailbox. Glug glug, indigestion, help, help. Oh god. Whoa, Ugg! This mailbox is having problems. The mailbox twists nervously, then spits out a damp letter. Is it for me? It looks kind of gross, indeed. It's a windless night, buildings bathed in dark red moonlight. Tightly shut doors prevent anyone from entering. You are the only living being within a hundred miles. Open the envelope. You try to ignore the sticky sensation on your fingertips as you carefully open the envelope. To the distant recipient, please arrive at the Furl Manor before midnight. Be punctual or face the consequences. Brain redacted, exploded to redacted. Manor address confidential. God dang it. Why does it gotta be confidential? Furlan Manor? I remember, I remember, that's Mr. Dexter's place. Since when did he start playing pranks too? Plus, I didn't bring my watch. So I can't even tell the time. Bring watches. Tick tock, tick tock. A huge clock appears in the sky. Its hands stopped at 11 o'clock. The thin second hand moves coldly, methodically. What's happening? Oh, you got the same letter as me. <gasps> Who's there? Sorry, Keeper, sir. You seem pretty focused. I called you several times. Don't you remember me? I'm Elsa. We took Miss... Doll's introduction to dissolution together. No, we didn't. I don't know you. Elsa, I remember now. She often borrowed notes from Ramona. Sorry, I keep failing my courses. Elsa lowered her head, hugging the heart-shaped pillow tightly. Don't be sad, Miss Elsa. Failing D Miss Doll's class is a rite of passage for, for most investigators. By the way, you said you received the same letter. Can you see it too? You point to the giant clock hanging above the full moon. I can see it, but I'm lost. Can't find the right direction, and I've got less than a minute left. Oh, Jesus. Strange, my countdown has one hour left. Oh, no. She's gonna die. Is it because you entered this world first? I don't know. It's just a prank, right, Fluffy Pantser? I haven't been on field work, so I like experience with anomalies. Honestly, it's the first time I've encountered this situation, too. She's so dead. Countdown ends in five seconds. You gently take Elsa's hand. It's just a minute left, not even a time machine will suffice, but do not fear. Oh well, okay. No matter what happens next, I'll protect. Well, oh, here. Elsa's head exploded into a warm mush of brain matter. The viscous liquid splattered on my face, filling the air with a metallic scent of blood. The fluffy pants save, or redacted, save redacted. Dark sludge continually oozes from the broken neck, forming another pale, unfamiliar face. Help me, help! Redacted, redacted. Miss Elsa, what happened? 
The beast's blade slices through the air, cutting Elsa in half instantly. Black corrosion fluid gushing like blood. It's futile. She lost her mind long ago. Mr. Riker. Riker's retracted his beast claws and walks towards you beast briskly. Why the near tears face? Don't worry, this place is like some guy's secret domain. Domain? Yes, yeah, so this Elsa is likely alive in reality. Oh, thank God. As expected of the detective, spotting it right away. Your reasoning? It was a night like this when I first met Elsa. At that time, she was being chased by a bunch of dissolution monsters. I just came out of the tavern, showed her away, killed the monsters chasing her. We met again just now. Same time, same place, but I misled her, causing her to get hurt. So that means... So you're saying... My good luck is gone. That can't happen, so I reasonably conclude this isn't real. Well, you could slap me twice to check if this is a dream. I slapped myself several times just now, but it didn't work. Hmm. All I know is that I don't want my head to explode, whether in the domain or, or in reality. You need my help. On my way, I saw lots of latecomers like Elsa. We should take the aerial route. There's an aerial route. Hmm. Indeed. Indubitably. Riker spoke and pointed to the nearby rooftop. You mean to fly over from the rooftop? Sorry, I'm just an ordinary keeper. Can't join in your acrobatic adventures. Oh god, he snatched me. In the next second, Riker picked you up and leapt into the air. It's like Lupin music instead of Sherlock. Hold tight, Keeper, the fluff Panzer. Ah. You grab into Riker's collar and fear. The crouching detective swiftly crosses roofs large and small, treading, or threading, I think he means treading, through Londinium's dense buildings. A man and a wolf sprint under the quiet moon. You only hear the clean wind. You lean down into the soft floor below. How was it? Fun? Didn't expect you to have this ability. Slow down. Request slow down. Riker laughed heartily, his chest vibrating as if every cell in his body was cheering. That's what a wolf should do. I'm just back into my old ways. Understand? I told you, slow down. Easy there. Don't grab my fur. Okay, eight little soldiers stay up till late at night. No one hanged himself, and then there were seven. Oh well, that sucks for him. No survivors, part two. Fruit Furland Manor, eleven thirty p.m. Woohoo! Successful descent. Are you sure Dexter lives in this dump? Has he gone bankrupt? Sorry, this is the least conspicuous of his over fifty properties. Excuse me. Hmm, I just thought of a brilliant idea. Just to be clear, don't even think about scamming Mr. Dexter. He has zero interest in any form of gambling, speculative investment, or risked entrepreneurship. The detective, rudely interrupted, grudgingly retracted his hand, stubbornly nodding towards the mansion. Cough, cough. What are you thinking? I mean, we should get inside and set up an ambush. Okay, 11.45 p.m. The heavy one door- oh, this is where Ogier flashes back to. The heavy one door is pushed open. Riker enters the hall, arms spread with exaggerated enthusiasm. Dexter, my old pal, it's only been a few days, and you're inviting us to your estate for a reunion? Of course, I have to say, this method of invitation is a bit extreme. Hey, what about the ambush? I know what you're implying, it wasn't me. Dex Dexter sat at the end of the long table, ruffling his messy hair impatiently. Ramona mentioned that Mr. Dexter gets very grumpy when his sleep is interrupted. I was sleeping at home when suddenly a bunch of people knocked on the door and all the servants disappeared. I still don't understand what happened. A group of people. Click. Somebody took a picture. A flash of white and the room returned to its original silence. Oh no, it's her. Hmm, still can't capture anything. This place is really off. Anna, what are you doing here? The title of the Vice President of the Deduction Society isn't for show. I'm the best at finding paths. Good evening, the Fluffy Pants, sir. Good evening, boss. Mm-hmm. Oh, he must be the president. Boss, didn't think you two knew each other. 
Mr. Riker is a renowned detective in the East District. When we team up, criminals avoid us at all costs. <coughs> Curb your journalistic instinct. It's not a news report. Riker shrugged helplessly at you. I have her run some errands for me, and in return she gathered per plenty of intel from me. It's a mutual benefit. Speaking of mutual benefit, didn't another person have close ties with Mythag too? Following Riker's gaze, you notice a richly dressed woman holding a wine glass smiling at you from the shadows. We meet again, Keeper, sir. And so we do. Miss Sorrel, you, how did you... Too bad, I was hoping we'd meet again under more formal circumstances. But here, there's only a remote mansion and an empty wine glass. What to do to pass the time? Build the drinks and let's party all night! It's Karen. With a cheerful female voice, Sorrel's glass of wine magically refilled. Has to be Karen. Surprising, it tastes like Chardonnay. How's that possible? Oh no, it's not Karen. It's a magician girl. Eh, what's this? Look at this. Cassia tapped her cane lightly on the rim of the cup, and red wine instantly blossomed into roses, red roses, trembling legitimately in the light. She picked the most beautiful flower and gently placed it behind Sorrel's ear. The most beautiful rose for the fairest lady of Londinium. Wonderful, Miss Magician. Are you interested in a court position? I simply must recommend you to the Queen. If the price is right, anything goes. Hey, isn't that the, our keeper, sir, and the detective? Cassia looks surprised as if, if she just noticed you. Since we parted in Aram, I think of you every day. I have that effect on people. Wait, I didn't kill William. Cassia is just a poor worker. You don't want to start a massacre in this gentleman's house, do you? No problem, I don't mind a good talk outside. <laughs> let me clarify, I'm very familiar with this terrain. If you can't win, run. Oh nice. Thud thud. A giant clock suddenly hovered above everyone, striking midnight. It's time for the murder mystery. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, welcome to my paradise. Ah, why doesn't this kid have a face? This familiar attire and feeling, could it be? Congratulations to everyone for using your wits and cooperation to solve my first puzzle. The warm-up is over, now for the main topic. Bang! The bullet pierced the mysterious figure's face, leaving a large hole in the middle. Sorry, the gun accidentally went off. Enjoying the game, man? So it's him. The remaining black mist on N's face twisted and stretched, quickly filling the void. Boring, you all recognize me so quickly. Mr. Riker is ecstatic when running under the moonlight. Do you like the role-playing game I just made for you? Huh, rather ordinary. Is this your domain? Of course, if you want to leave, stay in this house and solve the puzzles I set up. Hey, this is my house. Don't care anyone- does anyone care about my opinion? Sss. Boom! Perfect, my little assistant has cut the only bridge to the outside world. Now you can't go anywhere. Wonderful. What? Go and check it out. Why would he lie, bro? Why would he lie? The place is silent. You stand by the broken bridge edge, speechless. Snow began to fall from the sky, drifting down. You clutched the dull silver key at your chest. Since stepping onto this land, your connection with it severed. It's useless. I've cut your connection with the redacted. You no longer have any special abilities. So it was you all along. Don't worry, staring won't help. True heroes solve problems like ordinary people, am I right, Erica? Erica? Mechanical footsteps sound from the corner. Dang it, Erica. Erica- oh, she's been controlled. Erica wielded a giant chainsaw, extending her arm into an incredible length, cutting the bridge on the other side. Oh no. This guy's mechanical arm is interesting. I need to find a way to get it. Erica turned off the chainsaw, walked behind N, and even bowed respectfully. Reporting to Master, the only route to the outside from Furland is destroyed. It took 5 minutes and 40 seconds. Electricity depleted. You, what did you do to Miss Erica? Anne lightly jumped onto Erica's shoulder, casually crossing his legs. Don't worry, I just influenced her thoughts a bit with my charisma. Meet my new assistant, Erica. Erica, say good evening to everyone. Good evening, Erica will supervise everyone for now. Please follow me back to the mansion. Just a heads up, if anyone dares to disobey my new assistant, and lightly pressed the electrical soft switch in Erica's hand, deafening noise makes making everyone cover their ears instantly. Alright, alright, whatever you say. Excellent. Now Erica will take over. I still have 
1,124 contracts to sign with demons. Remember, the bad guy is among us. Trust no one. Oh, nice. Da, 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 da. What are you looking at? I haven't even started yet. Oh, so what did you plan to do? Excellent, everyone. Keep up the arguing spirit. Don't let my presence hold you back. Oh, he's blushing. Our code of conduct, first, chaos, second, chaos, third. Let me guess, still chaotic? Wrong, it was endless chaos. Okay, guy. Have fun, everyone. After speaking, Anne vanished in a dense black mist, leaving everyone bewildered. The fluffy pan, who is this annoying guy? You seem to know him well. You pondered, debating whether to tell Hannah everything you knew, but soon realized it wasn't necessary. You know nothing about Anne either. Sorry, I don't know much about this guy either. He changed his appearance and his personality became more... He wanted to say lively, but swallowed the world word. Even more annoying. If I'm not mistaken, we need to solve the puzzle to uncover the final truth, right? Right? Mm, yes, that's right. A small issue, this guy forgot to mention the topic. It is indeed endless chaos. You looked at the room, broken bridge ahead. The dark valley seemed bottomless, isolating you from the distant island. Mr. Dexter, is this really the only way out? Dexter sighs helplessly. I chose this place because it's secluded, shielding me from many meaningless social interactions and attention. Unexpected twist. The snow fell thick and fast, quickly covering the damaged wooden bridge. A chew, blizzards, isolated mansions, and people mysteriously gathering together. I have a bad feeling. That a murder is about to happen. Ba da da! The haunted house. The relationship between an old house and a ghost is like cheese and bacon. It's hard to say which came first, but by the time everyone realizes, they're inseparable. Chapter 3 The Haunted House. Berlin Manor, two hours later. Lady Luck hasn't favored you tonight, Mr. Riker. The pie has exceeded 10,000 Leo fame. Do you want to raise? Of course. Glad to hear it, Mr. Riker. Once we're out of this domain, I'll have the bat butler send you the bills. Send our bill to him as well, hee <laughs> hee. Darn it. In must have done something to me. Excuse me. The game at the table is intense, and nobody cares about your little question. Sorry for the disturbance. Does anyone remember we're trapped in the domain of a darn mad deity? Correction, a bad and forgetful deity. What we need to do now is conserve our energy until he remembers what question to ask, right? Straight flush, nice. Oh, wow. Well. Fine, I'll investigate nearby. First floor study, Ferlin Manor. Hmm, this guy's books are all fancy additions that haven't been opened. How did he become a professor at Mythag? Huh, what's this? In a neglected corner, a black coffin catches your eye. Complex patterns and symbols are painted in gold on the sides of the coffin, with black mist seeping from the central gap. Hmm, can't push it open at all. Looks like something like in the style of Gora Mawashi. Where did Dexter get this? Curiously, you reached out, gently glide, gently touching the gilded patterns on the coffin side, but then... Apophis, the black pharaoh in Karnak, you honor him. He lives, he lives, he lives. Apophis, he's not dead. He's not dead, Apophis. Okay. Return the slab. What's wrong, my lord? You look so pale. Sorry, I have an urgent matter to attend to. I'll be back shortly. Hmm, strange. Another ran off. Oh, looks like I'm about to break even. Where are the robotic assistant and magician? Hmm, I just saw Miss Erica going upstairs. As for Miss Cassia, no one knows has seen her since she came back. I'm a bit tired, too. Want to get some fresh air. But it's snowing heavily outside. You'll catch a cold, Miss Cyril. Cyril? This isn't the real world. There's no need to follow the rules. Besides, sometimes it's nice to enjoy the snowy scenery, isn't it? I don't know. I guess, yeah, I like snow. Cyril left with graceful steps. The lively hall became quiet. Boss, the card game is just the front, right? I know you have a plan. Uh... Indubitably! <laughs> right. Mr. Dexter's reaction was odd earlier. Let's check his bedroom. Wow, game on, detective. Oh, sneaky snoops. Berlin Manor stairway. Boss, are you sure Mr. Dexter is in his bedroom? I thought I saw him heading towards the study. Hmm. 
It's hard to explain my deduction process. Just think of it as strange intuition. Got it. This must be the famous detective's intuition. Don't worry, boss. I won't question a word. Anna pats her chest and takes out her magnifying glass to inspect around. Investigation 215 starts. First, a wooden stairs made from the black spade, understated, luxurious, serene. Thinking of a career change, Miss Hannah? Suddenly, I feel you'd fit right in and selling high ads at Heinz Company. Please don't interrupt others' investigations. Lastly, there's a carved window by the stairs. Uh oh. Dexter. A vague shadow flashed past the window under the lens. Ah, uh, ghost! Cheekies! Speak in terms I can understand, Miss Hannah. Mr. Dexter's ghost right at the stairway, floating up, up, and away. Oh, is he Superman? Riker stepped forward, opened the window, wind howled, snowflakes slur swirling aimlessly. He looked up, the warm light of the snow f or the second floor room, casting a faint orange glow on the snowflakes. Interesting, more than one room is lit. Let's check it out. Berlin Manor, second floor hallway. Huh, the door's locked. Mr. Dexter, are you in there? Feeling any better? The room was deathly silent. After a while, Dexter's muffled voice came from inside. Sorry, I'm not feeling well. Can I take a break? You guessed it right. He's really inside. What's the plan now? Let's retreat. This is a noble's mansion. We should observe basic etiquette. Riker said while stepping back a few paces. Then he suddenly accelerated and jumped, kicking the door. Splash! Unpredictable. The solid oak door was kicked open with a large hole. Riker reached in, easily found the handle, and calmly opened the door, while breaking and entering. Ladies first, please. Uh, what happened to manners? Sorry, my manners only extend to humans. Open your eyes, what is that? Following Riker's gaze, Hannah saw, sees a black gramophone beside the desk, the black rec record slowly spinning. Sorry, I'm not feeling well. Can I take a break? Sorry, redacted, not feeling well. Resting. Rest, rest, redacted, rest. Everyone, please leave and soon let Mr. Dexter rest. Okay, Erica. Whoa, when did you? Miss Erica, even though that guy has turned you into an idiot, I still have to remind you. Not every, even a hair of Dexter is here. Everyone, please leave soon and do not. Forget her for now. What's the deal with this gramophone? Simple, my dear Watson. Someone made an alibi, but I saw through it immediately. I see, I get it. In detective novels, when there's an alibi, there's a murder! Bang. Uh, a sudden gunshot disrupts the still night. That was from downstairs. Go check it out. The game, it might have already started. The Coffin Wall. He is yesterday, but he knows today. He dwells with the gods, and his life is endless. Coffin Wall, Part 4. You. I'm in the desert. How did this happen? Perrine. What a name. Let's stop here. We'll part ways now. Are you still searching for the Wall of Truth? You nodded. This is a dream. It was in a dream. Dreamception. Then I won't persuade you. Honestly, I never understood you. You look young, but seem a thousands of years old. Anyways, thanks. I found a way to break the seal. Next step, head to Rome and release the beast. Oh, sick. Release the beast! The wizard painstakingly packed his bags and turned back after a few steps. Hey, you still haven't told me your name. The wind blew golden sand. The ragged wizard leaned against the blue sky, a rare kindness on his flushed face. This should be our final meeting, yet your heart feels calm. Karnak. My name is Karnak. I'll stick on Karnak. Something of Apoth Apothis or whatever. Hmm, what a strange dream. Why am I in this quarter? Ever since I touched that coffin, my mind's been a mess. Apophis lives! Dum dum dum. With a flurry of footsteps, you collide with a dark figure. Ouch, watch it. Oh, a keeper, sir. Phew, glad you're okay. I thought. Why are you two here? Did something happen? Secretly, the hunting game has started. Oh, it's her. A slender figure glides through the darkness. Cassia lands right lightly in front of you all, as if by magic. Magic. I know where the gunshot came from. Want to go check it out with me? I'm a bit scared alone. Where did you come from? 
Cassia has been sleeping on the chandelier. As the saying goes, the higher you stand, the farther you see. Oh, crazy eyes. I saw everything. Cassia said, winkfully, winking playfully at you. She sniped somebody. The chandelier. Why are you standing there? Don't you want to be the first to see the crime scene? You saw it first, so we'll be the second. The ha ha. You pushed open at the study door. Th this is Mr. Dexter. A man dangles from the rafters like a leaf in the wind, face shadowed in a blue-green pallor, eyes bulging. Everyone, please stay calm to avoid tampering with the crime scene. Crime scene? Don't look, this guy's completely dead. Let me guess, this is our puzzle? It's a kind of detective game? Bingo, correct. So who, on such a snowy night, cruelly murdered a charming nobleman? Sorrel. Please try to uncover the truth, dear detectives. Curious, isn't it? Aren't you a prime suspect, Mr. N? <laughs> Let me be precise. Find the killer disguised as one of my clones. Right among you. Dead silence. Fear and unease quietly spread among the crowd. Eyes subtly scanning others weighing near his words or ends words. What if we fo refuse this game? You know what's most important for a game designer like me? So full of ideas and passion? Of course, the player's engagement. If everyone loses interest, I'll have to announce the end of the game. Nice. No response. Everyone waits for the butt. But. Farewell forever, poor Miss Dexter and Miss Elisa. Mr. Dexter and Miss Elisa. Meanwhile, it is Mythag Infirmary. What's the situation? What, doll? Not good. Elsa has severe intracranial bleeding. Increasing cerebrospinal fluid pressure and a sustained temperature above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The keeper and Hannah found that some sort of delirium. Though constantly asleep, their vitals are normal. Now <laughs> my nose is stuffed up. Got it, and what about him? The girl didn't mention a name, but everyone knew who she meant. Mr. Dexter, preliminary diagnosis is no pressure causing reflex cardiac arrest, like mechanical asphyxia. Cardiac arrest? Winkle nods. Rescue failed. He stopped breathing five minutes ago. Theoretically speaking, he's dead. Oh, nice. First floor study, Furlan Manor. So if we don't follow your rules, people who die here won't wake up in reality either? If you die in the game, you die in real life. Oh my god. And nodded in satisfaction. As expected, you know me best. Yeah, I'm not the proud of it at all. What if it's just a trick? How will you prove you're not lying? Of course, I can prove it, but I don't want to, ha ha ha. Or you could risk it. End the game immediately. Return to your cute little world where nothing has changed. The blanket always stays warm. Exam continue, and everyone lives healthily. Oh nice, that's what we want. And looked at Riker, Riker, passionately opening his little arms. Wanna bet? This is your forte. Sorry, I never gamble with others' lives. Nice. The game has just begun. Ending now would be too dull. Cassius stood up straight, raising her right hand swiftly. Beep beep, I vote to keep playing. Okay. After much discussion, for different reasons, everyone surprisingly reached a consensus. I'm deeply moved. Thanks everyone for respecting my design unconditionally. Now I declare the second trial officially begins. You all have two hours to solve the mystery. Just two hours? That's not enough. Oh ho ho! While some were doubting the great end lord, <laughs> ten more seconds ticked by. Well then, have fun, everyone. After speaking, end vanished into the black smoke without a sound. Riker pondered for a while before suddenly pinching your face. Don't pinch me, Wolfman. Pain. Hey, what are you doing? Relax. Let's check if you're an imposter. Moderate caution is necessary. So, you grabbed a handful of Riker's fluffy fur and yanked a few strands out. <laughs> If it smells legit. No problem, take it all. Clean, dry, and preserve it well. Oh. The first encounter. Humans are doll creatures. Just put a wooden board between them, and they can't recognize each other's scent anymore. Part 5, the first encounter. How many parts are there? I was outside the house, wandering around, looking for a way out. You said you were on the chandelier. She's changing her story. I like her hair. So you're saying there's no alibi. Got it. Did you find the way, Miss Cassia? 
Use your brain, detective. If I had found out, would I still be standing here? Uh, makes sense. First floor kitchen. The host instructed to prepare food for everyone. No one entered the kitchen, so Miss Erica also lacks an alibi. Sorry, detective. From our perspective, you, the keeper, and Mr. Riker are all suspicious. Hannah and Riker are the only ones with the alibi. But, but, even I don't have one. I've been with Mr. Riker all the time, right, boss? No one answers Hannah's guilty call. At the other end of the house, the detective and his temporary assistant began their investigation. Both shoes are missing, and there are two grooves on the neck. Strange. You closely examine the two lig ligature marks on De Mr. Dexter's neck with a magnifying glass. They're nearly identical, with slight variations in angle. The textures of the two grooves are different, too. Inside is a neat diamond pattern, outside is rougher. Maybe the rope snapped midway or got bloodier, so the killer replaced it. Regardless, both grooves on the neck ran past the jawline, extended behind the ears, and gradually disappeared at the back of the head. These are ligature marks from hanging. No, that's wrong. The scratches near the grooves suggest a violent struggle. Or maybe they regretted it after hanging. I've heard similar cases. Without that vinyl record, 9 out of 10 cops would have closed the case as a suicide. I'm the last vigilant one. Oh yeah, you're the 10th detective? Vinyl record? Sure, you weren't on sight, right? A vinyl record endlessly played with Mr. Dexter's voice like a ghost. Ghost! Hannah suddenly interjects, vividly describing a shuddering mid-sentence. Boss, we searched everywhere, but couldn't find Miss Sorrell. Could she already be? Riker waved confidently. You'll find out where she is soon. The case is almost identical to the first murder I investigated. Well, was that what the boss meant by intuition just now? <laughs> I'm sorry about that. It's true. Final records, a deserted mansion, a mysterious hanged man. Hannah remembered too. Mysterious doghead man solves high society drama. I can still remember that headline. Doghead, did you make this up? Outside, I always present myself as a perfect gentleman. Mentioning Riker's past, you immediately get interested and pull Hannah over. Be honest, I've always found his detective status suspicious. You have to know that in Lodinium, solving ca a case pays less than 10 minutes at the gambling table. Maybe being a detective is just a cover. Retract your personal attack on me, the keeper of the fluffy pan. Gamblers can have their own hobbies and careers too. Huh, why is there a coffin there? Dexter's taste is really questionable. Don't touch it! Before finishing his words, the detective casually kicked the coffin twice. The response was dead silence. Strange, it didn't doesn't react to your touch? Oh, then tell me how should it react? You recounted everything you had encountered to Riker. I'm the murderer. I see, I understand now. There must be a mysterious, powerful, supreme mummy inside. Riker suddenly squatted down, speaking in a language you completely didn't understand. Mudchoke, Raccoon Mire, Redacted. What are you talking about? It's the Mahai language. Waxalakulu Nekansamanzi. The black coffin remains solemn and silent, unfazed by the friendly but somewhat obscure greeting. All right, stop playing. I've heard Aram's ancient language. Your pronunciation isn't even close. Touch. Boring. Let's get back to business. Riker stood up, stretched lazily, and snapped his fingers twice in the air. All right, everyone. I know who the killer is. To save time, I'll skip the deductions and take you straight to them. If any novelist moved to the plot like Mr. Riker, they'd be strung up by angry readers. Not willing to share even the tiniest hint, Riker scratched his head irritably. Vinyl record, its presence likely suggests the murderer tried to fabricate an alibi by delaying the crime scene timing. So you're saying, while the record was playing, the victim's voice, the culprit, was actually at the crime scene. A clever ploy, but unfortunately, I didn't act as the killer planned. Hearing the noise, I didn't leave. I kicked the door open. A good detective dismantles the alibi. A great detective prevents the alibi in the first place. Did you jot that down, the life principal, Hannah? Uh, noted, boss. But boss, you just said the culprit was at the crime scene. Riker pulled out a handgun and walked forward leisurely. Now, let's bring out the killer who has been hiding since the incident. 
The detective stops by the wardrobe and gets two light knocks on the door, still planning to hide until the last moment. Then I'm done being polite. The detective looked troubled, rubbed his temples with his gun barrel before yanking open the wardrobe. Sorrel. Oh, it was Sorrel. Oh my goodness, Miss Sorrel. That would have been cool if it was me, though. No bad excuses, no hiding in shame, no tearful confessions. Only Sorrel's body lay quietly in the corner. The bullet held in her forehead, mocking the detective's pretentiousness. No, it wasn't me. No, this can't be. Ta-da! Sounds like someone made an incorrect deduction. Framing an innocent human is an unforgivable crime. Now it's time for punishment. In looked trouble, resting their round chin on their hand. Whenever they thought deeply, the mist on their face slowed down. Punishment, punishment, who to kill? Oh no. Beneath reality, if then, the detective's least favorite phrase implies failure, regret, and better, bitter gin, which he hasn't touched in years. It actually is a coding phrase that is used quite often. If so, then... Beneath reality, part six. Who should I kill? So, sorry, Mr. N. Deduction just now was nonsense from that guy. We all disagree. I wanted to argue against him from the start, but never found the chance. Wow, we're snitch. Miss Hannah, I assume you disagree with Miss Riker's deduction? Uh, I, I don't agree either. Only a madman could come up with this. Insane? Shut up. <laughs> you stomp on the detective's foot, but the competitive detective ignores your aggressive hint. He firmly moves his foot out and walked up to end. Wrong deduction. Impossible. You tampered with something. Do you forget about the di two different strangulation marks and the missing shoes? I can list dozens of possibilities right now, but do they really matter? Or is it that they wouldn't have mattered except under your arrangement? Original? That's strange. My task is to uncover the truth of the domain. Then the domain is your current reality and reference. Why does someone always cling to the so-called past? <gasps> Perhaps you once- Oh, my hat has like an exclamation point question mark on it. Perhaps you once solved this cave brilliantly, gaining a pain, pitiful bit of vanity and presence from rem reminiscing until now. But unfortunately, you utterly botched it here, detective. And slowly raised his hand and snapped his fingers lightly. Huh? Oh no. Next second, Black Mist suddenly screamed from Cassia's body, who was watching from the side. It's decided the punishment starts with you. Hey, wasn't that guy supposed to fail the deduction? Why is Cassia paying the price? No, it hurts. Oh man. See, every stupid decision you make costs someone just like in real life. I haven't had enough fun yet. Why should I care? Cassia glared at Riker and threw her cane furiously. It's all your fault, you so dumb. Ouch. Before finishing her words, Cassio completely disappeared in front of you, as if erased from the paper with a rubber. Miss Cassia. She promised to teach me some magic tricks. Alright, everyone, you have an hour left. If no more questions, then. And so on. The detective pats you on the shoulder and steps forward. The fluffy pan you keep investigating. I have a word with this guy. Understood. The crowd disappeared, dispersed again as thick darkness poured out, quickly consuming the domain. Alright, now we can speak freely. How do you like my new form? I prefer you as you are now. A pity. Recently I pondered whether my look is too intimidating, making everyone afraid of me. Trust me, you'd be more popular if you dropped those dark, twisted games. No need for head swapping. That won't do. Would you give up breathing? Okay, let's get to the point. You said it earlier, everyone will pay for my wrong judgment, just like in the real world. Can you explain? In tilted his head, and the dark mist enveloped him tightly. In the next second, it changed form again. Desperate to know, did you some cry come, come crying to me later? I hate human tears. Riker folded his arms, staring at in without any expression. Hmm, I can't say no to you. Where should I start? Start. Ah, uh, remember that girl named Elsa? In the story, the brave detective showed the girl the way and then helped her fend off the dissoluted monsters. But in reality, the girl followed the detective's direction, entered a dead-end alley, and was killed by the following corrosive monster. Shh, quiet, listen to me. In this story, a passing gambler solves a mystery 
a murder in a mysterious mansion and becomes a great detective. But in reality, the gambler wronged an innocent man, letting the killer, real killer, go free. I can give countless examples like this, detective. Have you ever thought that your good luck isn't why you got this far by the, but the result? Result? An altered outcome. The god just bestows luck upon morals. The price being that the rest must bear the suffering for him. As I said before, the domain is your reality. You mean all I gained through luck and the people I helped were all false? Hey, why the tearful face? Remember, living in an illusion can be a kind of happiness. If you don't believe me, take a real look at the real arm you once saved. Flames licks, lick the sky, the sounds of cries and the smell of burning flesh makes you dizzy. Crimson veins of coagulated blood sprouted from the base of the mother tree, joyfully stretching towards the horizon. Severed limbs stacked high like a giant shrine under the dim sky, even observing the daylight. In the shrine's center, Riker saw his own face. It was dull, gray and dull, sagging eyelids looking docile. If its half head wasn't cut off, exposing a brilliant, uh, exposing a brain stem, crawling with maggots, it would be a flawless face of a saint. True story, you failed to stop Cassie, you failed to stop Herbert, and didn't even see the Aram camp. The truth is, you accomplished nothing. Because of that, Aram has become this mess. Is this the reality you desire, my dear gambler? Reality ebbs away, leaving Riker alone in the dark. Huh, you designated this game just to remind me of my failures? No need for that. If there's one truth the world's taught me, it's these. I'm useless. I'm sorry, how regrettable. Just a small warning, I don't want to see what happened during your stay in Aram happening again. If you pull another life-threatening stunt, more people will disappear, got it? Got it. The detective bowed his head and lazily replied. The darkness parted, he was back in his familiar study. Phew, finally awake, you suddenly stood still, scared us to death. What happened, Mr. Riker? You look awful. Nothing. I needed some alone time. I'll be back soon. I need some alone time. I'll be back soon. The detective looked calm and even gave you all a friendly smile. <coughs> he almost left without the, a backward glance. Mr. Riker? Next Monday, sir. It's quite an achievement to be liked by everyone. Being hated by everyone is the same, and he can do effortlessly. Do both effortlessly. Kudos to you, Mr. Monday. Next Monday, sir, part seven. Regular right Furlan Manor outside 60 minutes ago. A chew a chew. Hannah holds a kerosene, curling up beside you. Darn, not a single footprint left. We came out too late. The room has been thoroughly searched. We can only try our luck outside now. Ah, <sighs> if only Mr. Riker were here, he'd have a way. He said he wanted to be alone, then vanished. Speaking of which, I only knew Mr. Riker as a gambler. Didn't expect you to do well as a detective, too. Because he's the famously lucky detective from the east side. With him on the case, clues appear as if by magic, and the killer is caught within three days. Some say they found ten Leo Bonds following Miss Riker for a day. He's everyone's lucky charm. But his luck doesn't work here. I heard this case is similar to one Miss Riker handled. Yes, although Mr. Riker doesn't say it, he cares a lot about that case. He used to have a nickname, Mr. Next Monday. Next Monday, sir. <laughs> Hannah clears her throat and starts speaking in an exaggerated tone. Riker, when will you pay your gambling debt? Next Monday. Riker, when will you get a job? Next Monday. Riker, when are you going to dead drop dead? Next Monday. Yep, that's it. Everyone mocked him back then. Kids made faces behind his back, and the bar owner grabbed a chair when he saw him. Nobody respected him. 
until he solved that case. Absolutely, ever since then his life seemed charmed, luck always on his side and everyone liked him more and more. So strange, such magic exists in this world? Who knows, in these times nothing is surprising. Wait, what's that? In the front corner by the wall, black man's, sh black man's shoe was half buried in the soft white snow. Wow, such an intricate carving. It's like, it's like something I'll never afford. A oh, Dexter shoe, obviously. It's Mr. Dexter's shoe. How did I know? Looking up, the cold gray wall stretched skyward. The dim lights floating like house lighthouses. That's Dexter's bedroom. You look down the study right in front of you. The, through the decorated window, Dexter's hanging shadows. <coughs> Excuse me. Dexter's hanging shadow silently stares back at you. The two rooms are aligned vertically. Hannah, I have a guess. You shove the shoes into Hannah's hands. Let's go, check the study. 30 minutes left until the case ends. 30. Berlin study. You grab the doorknob and open the door. What happened? Did you two go shopping? Mr. Riker, you're not. Yes, I was just deeply affected and had a good cry in the corner. You look at his casual stance and suddenly patted him on the shoulder. Glad you're okay. Psst, what's with that gross look on your face? Alright, no time to mumble. Mr. Riker, we made a disco big discovery downstairs. You counted your observations downstairs, Riker. I see. Riker approached the study's window where a faint shoe print could be seen on the white frame. He leaned out and looked up. Hmm. If I'm not mistaken, the other shoe is likely in this room. But before that, there's one thing I want to confirm. The detective stands before Sorrel's body, examining the bullet wound on her forehead. The edges have thick smoke grime and burn marks. The killer shot her face to face from a close distance. Huh, what does this mean? She shot herself. The detective suddenly bursts into laughter. It's the first time since entering the mansion he's laughed so heartily. Explanation complete. Let's proceed. The, it's time for a detection show. Tragedy show. Friends turning against each other. Siblings at odds. Love turning to hate. He delights in humans' twisted emotion. Calls himself a naturalist. This is the purest, most authentic emotion. Unprocessed with a raw and, raw and refreshing feel. Chapter 8. Tragedy show. Or part 8. A chew, a chew. This domain is really well cooled, boss. Can't we reason by the fireplace indoors? Relax, it won't take much time. First, the shoes outside. Question: Under what circumstances do shoes end up outside? Hmm. Did the deceased, excuse, excuse me, go out and meet with an accident? It's indeed possible. Our comparison shows that the shoe sole matches the footprint on the window frame. Would Lord Dexter, who always values etiquette, climb out of his house through a window, especially when the door lock is fine? Did he see something outside the window and rush out? I disagree on this point, but let's skip it for now. What happened after Mr. Dexter left? Remember the ghost I saw at the stairs earlier, floating in midair? The ghost, the hanging, could it be? Right. The truth is, someone distracted Mr. D Dexter, then put a noose around his neck when he leaned out and pulled it tight. Riker lifted his face, pointing towards the bedroom on the second floor. The killer was in Mr. Dexter's room. These two rooms are in a straight line. Brilliant. This explains the ghost incident and the footprints on the window frame. It's because Mr. Dexter struggled after being roped. But it requires immense arm strength and perfect angle prediction. So everyone's sealed. How could they... Hannah stops mid sentence, a guess forming in her mind. But after the ghost incident, we quickly went upstairs to the bedroom and didn't hear any other noises. The murderer should still be here, be there. But apart from that vinyl player, there was nothing unusual. A chew, a chew. Hannah wipes away two glistening strands of snot. Father above, how can one catch a cold even in a domain? <laughs> We've talked enough about the outside. Let's go in quickly. Think carefully of what happened after we kicked the door open. What happened? Sorry, I'm not feeling well. Can I take a break? Sorry, redacted, not feeling well, resting. Rest, 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 redacted, rest. Everyone, please leave soon and let Mr. Dexter rest. Whoa, when did you... I knew it! 
Anna suddenly lifts her head, staring directly at Erica behind the crowd. You weren't a late arrival. You were in the room all along, maybe hiding behind the door, attracting our attention while we were all focused on the record player. Rejected, Erica doesn't have the ability to be two places at once, making it impossible to explain why the victim appeared in the study. Yes, you can't be in two places at once, so you had help. Strangling an adult male with a mechanical arm in mid-air is child's play for Miss Erica, just like when you extended your arm to saw off the wooden bridge. After Mr. Dexter stopped breathing, you throw him down and the helper will drag the body into the study. That explains the two strangulation marks on the body and the wet clothing, because the body was dragged in the snow. The accomplice must be the only person without an alibi from the gunshot to the crime. Riker spoke, glancing at the wardrobe in the study's corner. Miss Sorrell. I see. I thought Mr. Dexter was strangled in midair, but I didn't expect an accomplice. Rejected. All deductions above are speculation without concrete evidence. What evidence? That's easy. Remember the two strangulation marks on the neck? The textures of the two grooves are different too. Inside is a neat diamond pattern. Outside is rougher. Maybe the rope snapped midway or got bloody, so the killer replaced it. <gasps> Neat rhombus, Miss Erica. Please extend your mechanical arm to show everyone the patterns of the retractable connecting lines. Snaring as a, a wary grown man on the second floor with a rope is nearly impossible, but the ro if the rope is part of your body, it all makes sense. So it's you, Miss Erica. Erica slowly extended her right arm. Under the light, the retractable cord connecting her forearm and hand glinted coldly. Those diamond-shaped patterns are neatly arranged like fish scales in the deep sea. Just as I thought, identical. Erica didn't respond. Black mist seeped seep from her body, revealing another familiar figure. Nice reasoning. So this so-called Erica is your clone. This means Erica is safe in reality. The fun of role-playing is something you guys will never understand, hee <laughs> hee. Is that deduction- is that deduction just now your final answer? Yes. Yeah, so close, one step to go. This isn't the final truth, so... And snapped his fingers, dark, releasing darkness from Hannah's body that filled the study. She grabbed Riker's cloak and coat in a panic. How could it be? Erica didn't deny it either. Tisk tisk. Your keeper buddy is too eager. Next time, remember to say it before he does. Sorry, Hannah, I... Help me, I haven't heard the final truth yet. Don't! <laughs> oh, dang. In the next second, Hannah disappeared from in front of you. Anna! Oh, what have I done? No, it's my fault. I was too hasty, indeed. Hmm, now it's just the three of us. The others must be suffering in the real world. Hee hee hee. Interesting, very interesting. Myth Ag Infirmary, meanwhile. How's it going? Well, they're still dying. Miss Hannah and the Keeper's conditions are worsening. Miss Hannah's internal organs are ruptured and she shows sign of hemorrhage. The keeper is also suffering severe asphyxia if this continues. We've interviewed many studies and our tech team has checked all the facilities but found nothing unusual. Making such a commotion under everyone's noses. End. Alstar and I agree. If it's him, everything makes sense. What should we do? We have no countermeasures. Doll touched a round head in her hand and sighed softly. One thing is certain. Still doesn't seem eager to take the keeper's life. As for the rest, I suggest you pray with me. Alright, with the bystanders gone, we can be honest. Inn's body emitted a chilling mist, masking his face in layers until his original appearance vanished. Moreover, the room you're in suddenly vanishes, replaced by that familiar opera house. Sorry, I'm not fond of tight spaces. Long time no see, old friends. What did you mean earlier? This isn't the final truth. Because you haven't identified Miss Sorrell's real killer, your deductions avoid her death, don't they? What are you afraid of? Sorry, you lost another friend. Maybe luck in this world is finite. You gain good fortune, your life improving, but others suffer misfortune because of it. Invisible rolls loom overhead. Can you really accept this? Heh, <laughs> what a ridiculous role. It's just your personal game. Your hostility towards me is still so genuine and adorable, yet regrettable. Although you failed to solve all the puzzles, I am always very forgiving. Then raise his finger, sending thick black mist towards you, tightly binding you. No! Ugh! 
Mr. N, I know my actions in Aram angered you, and I sincerely apologize. You can punish me. There's no need to hurt him. Hold on, detective. Listen to me. I have one last question for you. Alright, I'm listening. A simple choice. Kill the fluffy pan, and I'll revive everyone who died before. Everything will return to normal, except for that unlucky fellow beside you. No one else will be harmed. Or you could choose not to kill the fluffy pan, and both of you can leave the domain safely. Was it that simple? Still got your gun? Countdown starts now. Ten. No, you can't. Nine. Riker looked at you blankly, like a child who had done something wrong. Don't worry about me, cough. Maybe they'll turn me into a waker if I die. <laughs> oh man. You strain all your facial muscles to give Riker, Riker a forced smile. Bring it on. Six. Riker slowly walked towards you, eyes calm. As your vision blurred, you looked into his eyes, memories of moments together flashing through your mind. Chasing each other in the desert, escaping the Aram's redacted gathering, and using his life to injure Cassia. There's too much history between you two. Unbeknownst to you, Riker was already standing before you. You couldn't see his face, but you knew his pain was no less than yours. In the next second, he raised his pistol. You know what? I never doubted you, so... Hey, The gunshot hits right where your heart is. Dead on. What? Barker stood over you, a mocking smile on his face. I've waited for this moment for a long time, Keeper. Truth type. Eliminate all impossibilities. Only the truth remains. Of course, quantum physicists would agree. Part 9, Truth Type. No, why? You fall to your knees. A dull ache spreads from your chest. Dark red blood seeping into your uniform jacket. You fool, what are you talking about? Biker examined the crafted gun, handgun in his hand before leisurely bowing, blowing the gun barrel. Seeing you in an awkward state, he flashed a sinister smile. I knew it was me. I didn't stop you from sending Hannah away because she couldn't handle the truth. After all, she's just an ordinary student. And you, my friend. I knew you wouldn't be able to resist the order to perform. Hey, is acting fun? I knew it was me. I knew it was me the entire time. You rushed to interrupt me from revealing Sorrel's Sur death truth. Did you really think I'd lower my guard just because of your disguise? Dear Mr. N. The blood stopped flowing, transforming into black mist that enveloped you. Finally, the curly-haired student disappears, and the dark mist pours into N. You seem to enjoy acting, old friend. Just a small inspiration I got from you. We're even. Interesting. Very interesting. How did you figure it out? Because it was obvious. I was one of the ones without a freaking alibi, obviously. Didn't you say from the start, trust no one? I have many faults, but my natural suspiciousness isn't one I'll change in a lifetime. I first suspected upon seeing Sorrel's body, shot in the front with no other wounds. The bullet mark on the forehead had a heavy suit and gunpowder burns, indicating two things. First, the killer shot her from very close range. What's the second point? It indicated the perpetrator is someone the victim trusted, the only one who fits... Only person here who fits that is Fluffy Pan. You rushed to kill her because I discovered the secret of the vinyl record, and you don't want the game to end too soon, am I right? In shrugged indifferently. It's just baseless suspicion, and you have the heart to shoot the keeper? You really are the gambler I choose. Goes. If I were the keeper of the Fluffy Pan, sir, I'd be weeping for your cruelty. Heh. <laughs> I would never joke with someone's life. The reason I dare to shoot you is simple. I already know where he is. What? Just an hour ago. Flylander Mansion in the coffin an hour ago. A piece of primal and warm chaos. You close your eyes, lowering your consciousness to the bare minimum. Am I dreaming again? God dang it. At last, you arrive at the high wall. This is a wall of truth, covered by the curtain you see. Only a corner is revealed during a ceremony every few years. It records the past, documents the present, and predicts the future. The priest speaks and kneels before you in reverence, including your arrival, Kardak. It's raining. Yay, yeah, rain. You kneel before the vast painting, groaning like a trapped beast, finding release 
Rain, water, and tears flow down from your eyebrows and eyes. After thousands of years, you finally became the Pharaoh of Rimawahe. You've met your des destiny. Then... Move aside, I'm going to tear down the darn curtains to shreds. Noble son of Amon, you should not be here. Death shall descend upon whoever breaks the law of the wall of truth. Heh, <laughs> first plague, then famine, now Apophis' army outside the city. Open your eyes, blind priest, death has come. I followed the wall's instructions to Valley, but brought disaster to the riverside inhabitants. That's the result of blind conformity. Be patient, young master of Rimawahe. What has been done pertains to the afterlife. What will be done pertains to eternity. The afterlife is but daylight. Wish I got to think of something. Eternity is night. The wall of truth brings honey and papyrus, and also venom and plague. Only by following it will its will can our souls safely cross the night river after death, becoming eternal on the distant shore. I don't care about eternity from you lying vampires. I see my hard fought lands disappearing overnight, my people dying. Even my most trusted subordinate, Apophis, Apophis, has turned his blade against me. He's waiting outside to claim my head and hang it high on the wall. I've lost everything, priest. If this is the fate arranged by the wall of truth, I want to keep my eyes open and watch it die. You shove aside the elderly priest and tore down the veil. Oh, what the hell? Graffiti. It's fourth, the truth of the world unfold before you. One card, two cards, three cards, four. Countless crude, smiley face graffitis painted in brick red with gaping mouths mockingly laugh at your despair. I see, this is the so called truth. Ah! <laughs> Nonsense, contempt, this is the truth of the world. In the next second, the painting vanished and darkness returned. No desert, no priest, no pictorial scroll. You're alone in a pitch black coffin. Your thoughts seem trapped in the memories of Karnak, enveloped by endless sorrow. Tears fell uncontrollably like endless rainfall. No, I. Redacted, redacted. I just want to live, redacted, redacted, redacted. Thud, thud, thud. Yes. A distant knocking disrupts the sad ocean's rhythm. Then you hear a familiar voice. Hey, friend, in the coffin. You alright? Inverse reasoning. The merely retroactively deducing the so-called cause based on the outcome or stance. This kind of farce has been happening throughout human history. Inverse reasoning part 10, probably the final part, hopefully. The knocking continues. Hey friend of the coffin, are you alright? A light and joyful voice comes, magically stopping your tears instantly. Sorry if I was rude to you earlier. But, I have many questions now, and want to ask you, are you unavailable to talk now? Yes, redacted. You muster all your strength to speak, but the words come out as incoherent murmurs. That complicates things. Oh, can you still move your hand? One knock for two, yes for no. Can you do that? Through this thick sandalwood, Riker's voice seemed unusually gentle. You give a light knock. Great, actually, it's simple. I have only three questions. First question, are you trapped inside something? One knock. Second question, are you one of us? By us, I mean those who entered the, that guy's domain? One knock. Great, my instincts never lie. The third question, are you the fluffy pant? One knock. You pound on the coffin to hear a slight, soft chuckle. Knew it was you. Don't be scared. I'll solve everything and get you out. Stay here, okay? Thud. Goodbye, my friend. The sound of clothes rustling and footsteps fading away reaches my ears. You exhale deeply and close your eyes, but soon footsteps return. Sorry, I forgot the most important question. It's crucial for my next steps. He's blushing. Uh-oh. Do you love me? <laughs> you quietly wait for that important question. Do you trust me? Oh, I was close. What kind of question is that? One knock. You smile and touch the inner surface of the coffin. Double knock. Ha! <laughs> Plot twist. Thud, I trust you. Dang, man. I see, your instincts are always sharp. Unfortunately, he is trapped by that guy's consciousness. Even if you uncover the final truth, it's useless. The reality is, he will be forever trapped in the mind of my carefully selected vessel. What? You said once all the truths were revealed. 
The slowly flowing black mist on Imp's face curled comfortably, as if savoring a delicacy. Ah, the first time I've seen that look on her face. Sadly, anger fixes nothing. I only promise to dissolve the domain, not that everyone will be saved. Say goodbye to your buddy, detective. In raises his finger, but the next moment, the nightmare is over. Open your eyes. Boom. I just broke out of the coffin. Probably. The floor beneath us suddenly cracks open, and a black serpent surges from the endless abyss, piercing In's body. What? To clarify, 80% of my body is made of mist. The remaining 20% is also missed. These futile tricks. A sun silver glow, signaling the start of the show. A curly haired student rubbed a stiff shoulder with one hand, holding a silver key in the other, emerging from the shadows. Phew, I just made it. As expected of the one I believed in, I knew you wouldn't be trapped easily. Hmm, naturally. Thanks to the new friends I made in the coffin. Oh, it's Apophis. Psst. Snake. Long time no see, Apophis. Uh. Final salute! Oh, there's an actual battle. Interesting. They are all dead in, in a dead end, yet all seek rebirth together. Okay. Oh man. He's, uh, you better carry Riker, because I'm underleveled. <sighs> the final salute, part 11. Before, in the beginning, bang. The sound of the gunfire seems to come from afar. <coughs> the graffiti, yay. You open your eyes to see the ball covered in twisted characters. It started raining unknowingly. A black mist hovers inside you. You can't see its outline, but feel a strange familiarity. It's Kanak. It's Karnak. The rain continues to fall. Silence flowing beneath, between you both. Hey, how they changed his names. Now it's Karnak. My, with the C. What the hell? Strange it rained. When I saw this wall for the first time, first and last time, like tears. So what happened after you saw the so-called truth? Well, I quelled the rebellion and turned Apophis into a snake. Internally coiled at my feet. I ordered the wall of truth to be completely sealed and then began my own rule. No ideology, no system, no parliament. I just list names and exile them one by one, confiscating their assets. I awarded medals to citizens who visited the casino over 50 times and ordered the construction of an complete glass pyramid in the capital. Mocked by fate, you chose to be a tyrant. Later, you were overthrown. Quite the opposite. My nation is thriving. Do you know why? You shook your head. The black mist laughed in the light. Even the smallest war waged by a saint tyrant cost a thousand more times than the price of my whims. Huh? Oh. But you're not happy, and your people won't be satisfied with your whims. What's the point? Meaning, pursuing so-called happiness and purpose is a trap by that gentleman. I'm neither happy nor sad. I'm just faithfully playing the role that the fate requires me. E. Staring at the menacing yet familiar graffiti, you suddenly understood everything. So it's you, in. So you became a willing sacrifice for that person. Now we're both stuck here, unable to do anything. Did you hear that? The gunshot. Your friend hasn't given up yet. While reading in my memories, I read yours too. To him, you and that detective are different. So I don't mind giving him a surprise. Dark mist swirled around Karnak, slowly forming a black king cobra. Better not be disturbing my sleep out of boredom, my old friend. Long time no see, Apophis. This is my new friend. He needs your help. Apophis stands gracefully, neck drooping softly, emerald eyes quick, quietly watching you. The secret to eternal life is forgetting. My master has forgotten you again. Just like he forgot his past in Toronto. Taranto. But I know your spirit, pale and blind. You have met me? Take the fluffy pan away from here, Apophis. A black snake gently wrapped around your body as mist purred into you. You close your eyes, your bo empty body filled by silent awareness. The silver key's radiance shines again. Yay. The next second, the coffin vanished and you found yourself at the theater's corner, facing Riker and End on stage. 
A gentle and rational whisper echoes deep in my mind. I have followed my lord's orders and brought you here. The nightmare is over. Open your eyes. Nice. Oh man, it's a whole mission. I need My throat is dry. Help. Well, these things are weak, at least. Pick me, pick me. Where there's a Karen, there's a party. Apparently. What is the name? He does a lot of damage, wolf boy. I am the shadow of the murdered maid. The killer is that false green flame. The dim reddish flame flickers, accusing you. Excuse me. I once lived by the reflected crescent lake, brilliant and radiant. Throw the paper and wood chips into the flames. The fire greedily devours them and lets out a satisfied burp. It's ready to destroy the world, but not before you giving you a blessing. Yay, blessing. Any aim to shrink during this battle, gain one Chaos Legacy Relic, or upgrade an existing Chaos Legacy. Save it for the boss. Probably pretty close to the boss. So no more. 
注意しろ角笛を鳴らせ回って回ってよいしょうう I don't like the fact that you're using my money. I don't appreciate that. Start of each turn and when healing, gain four points of retaliate up to three times. Oh, that's really good, actually. Increase all Waker's crit rate by 10. All Rikers and Dice random effects won't show the lowest value. Okay. Dog. You are blocked by three sticky figures. One figure sings with a hoarse voice and airy lyrics. You cover your ears and bypass it. Another figure dances stiffly with uncertain steps. You close your eyes and evade it. The last figure recites broken poetry with destroying it something. Hide monster tensions get... Shadowy blood reveals its true form as you step in. Countless crimson black arms emerge, grasping at your ankles, pulling you toward the unfavorable abyss. Deduct 100 alienists from all wakers, remove one symptom card. What's claustrophobia? Oh. I'll take it. Uh, it doesn't. Yeah, I'll take the claustrophobia. Horse. Just lose your horse. Frame when you inflict weakness, gain nice show when you inflict. Oh, that's a good one.
Found one card at the start of your turn. You may keep one card. Crit rate plus 10% after each. Okay. Oh wait. Oh wait, I can get it from the junction. I don't need to pay for that. My bad. You hear? Hi, buddy. It's fight time. It's in. This flower. He looks surprisingly weak. What does you do? Wow, he got one shot him by himself. Good job, man. Shinderu, bro. <laughs> Killed him on the first turn. What a weakling. Now, Apophis. At your command, the Black King Snake darts out and coils around N's body. Black fog from the serpent mingles with N's own black fog, gradually giving him physical form. Long time no see, Karnax pet. Is your master still mad? The master bears you no know ill will. His actions were permitted by you. We're just faithfully following the script. Really? Interesting. Even I didn't realize that. The snake's slender tongue flicked, and its slow, soothing voice reached your ears. I can only trap its projection to the domain for a while. Once the projection retreats, the domain will be dissolved. Next, it's up to you. Yay. Shoot him in the head! Riker walks step by step towards the end. Looks like luck finally favored me. Careful, detective. For an incorrigible gambler, the scariest thing isn't losing, it's winning. If you don't believe me, ask the owner of this black snake. Seems you still don't know me well. Well, but you're right about one, about one thing. Riker raised his gun, aiming at Ant's misty face. Actually, I'm going to use this as a screenshot, probably. Bang, bang, son. I'm indeed a hopeless gambler. Luck irrelevant. Even knowing I'll lose everything, I'll go. Only those with luck dare to bet. They're normal, not gamblers. You picked me because you saw that, didn't you? Ha. Ha 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 ha. You're indeed a madman. Giving in to your base desires. How foolish and naive, Mr. Gambler. Likewise, my biggest advantage over other gamblers is... I love his gun. I have a gun. <laughs> Can't lose with a gun. I accept my loss honorably. The trigger is gently pulled. A gun shot and Anne's gentle head tilts to the side. In a hurry, are we? I was planning not to let you leave. But before leaving, let me tell you a secret. In fact, I never altered your fate. Cheating is such an interesting game. Wouldn't bring any joy. Goodbye, detective. Deuces. Did it work? Did I help you? Yeah, always. You're the best, Nymphaea. You and the Lomo. Good luck, detective. Until next time. Part 12. Good luck. Mythag Campus, one week later. Feeling better? Miss Sylvia said you had a poor appetite. Being strangled and resurrected is not a good feeling. Now I always feel like my throat is filled with stones. <coughs> Dexter coughs exaggeratedly. Exaggeratedly. What? Exaggeratedly. Well, after speaking. <laughs> Seems like everything's fine. So what's with the coffin at your place? 
If I'm right, it belongs to Ram Rimawahe's last pharaoh, Karna Karnak. I'm saying Karnak. They keep changing it. Dexter shrugs innocently. I want to know too, but before interrogating me, please distinguish reality from the secret domain. No criminal case has ever happened in my family, right? Has anyone seen Riker? Elsa just woke up and is demanding Riker's autograph. Aw. Didn't know Mr. Riker had admirers. Astonishing. I, he, I did save her from that monster if I have to. Elsa came to Mythax hoping to one day be like Mr. Riker. Become a gambler. Go help others. Mr. Riker doesn't like staying at school. As for the fluffy pan, he left early this morning claiming to have urgent matters. Besides, something feels off. Did Inn really set up this domain just to mess with Riker? Maybe, maybe not. This is as difficult as a double slit experiment. We should think about more practical issues. For example, what to do about Hannah's severe cold. Ha, ah, she's sick, so. In a pitch black cave, countless eyes slowly open and close, like ghost lights in the dark. A cold wind blew through, and a barely visible black mist wriggled in the center of the cave, forming a vague humanoid sh shape. Ugh, oh, Master Hurt. Redacted, redacted, redacted. The pamper ones. Long time no see, my detestable yet dear children. It's been centuries since my last visit. Let me see if you've grown up. Oh, sorry, I forgot you only have the one eye left. The eyes left. Master Love. Redacted, redacted. Alright, save the chit chat for later. I confirmed something interesting. The Seeker can actually resonate with Karnak's consciousness. Interesting. Hee hee hee, la la la, redacted, redacted. Shut up. <laughs> My projection is injured, needs a little healing. Shut up, all of you. Uh oh. With a piercing wail, all the eyes were crushed and blood started to drip onto the ground. The black fog rapidly expanding, consuming, greedily consuming the blood mist. Gradually, the once ethereal form took a tangible shape. What a terrible taste. Headgate Cemetery, East Londinium, Kent. See that? The first unlucky guy I sent to prison is buried here. You stood in front of a lonely tombstone in the corner. Based on his deductions in the domain, you likely sent the wrong person. You can't explain the two marks in the missing shoe. I don't think so. How do you know the rope wasn't replaced in a hurry because it got the killer's blood on it? As for the missing shoes, it's odd, but maybe it isn't strange to go barefoot at home late at night. Moreover, what strength and precision are needed to hang someone from the first floor window? Remember, besides the victim, everyone else was a woman or a child that night. Mm-hmm. I can't accept that reason. So, Riker patted you with a cheerful grin. The real world isn't a mystery novel, Keeper. No one kills with such convoluted me methods. Tch, not a mystery novel. Is it your luck? Perhaps. How coincidental that I found these clues. Did they grow legs? People always marvel at a mathematician's genius when he solves a problem, but genius is just being one a step ahead of a, the average person. Riker laughed and made a victory gesture towards an unseen distance. I guess you're like me. No one responds to the detective's naive action. A breeze blows, rustling the leaves, and night falls. Boring. Looks like it's about to rain. Let's go. You and Riker walk through the graveyard. The crunch of fallen leaves underfoot. No one spoke. Speaking of which, we've been together through so much together isn't it time you shared your past with me like in the novels like where you're from and how you fell for gambling hey unfortunately my past like that is quite dull telling it might ruin my f mystique <laughs> your self-awareness is as chaotic as ever that's what fascinates me all right if you insist let's find a cafe to talk laughter fades the graveyard returns to silence a faint black mist floats in the air like ancient unseen particles hidden from millennia. The mist watched the detective and the keeper leave, then happily spread out before reluctantly disappearing, as if it never existed. The end. I love this game, it's so good, dude. Sorry if you wanted to see other videos, I will one day finish this game, but I do enjoy it as well. Acquire a new posse. Add one shining bias die to hand. Gain 15% temporary crit rate. Well, you can do it on hard mode, which is just that stage. Alright, guys. 
I am going to upload this and then rest my voice a little bit. I don't know if I'm going to be playing some TFT tonight or I'm going to finish Chapter 5. i got to finish Chapter 5, but it's taken me a while because it's actually kind of hard, honestly. But yeah, thanks for watching as always, guys. Bye!